Hi, what we've got here is a pair of Red Wing boots, model 8138. I'm going to be covering the history and construction of these boots in this video. The 8138s are um, a kind of classic style for Red Wing boots. Um, Red Wings are, of course, manufactured in the United States in uh, Red Wing, Minnesota. And the 8138s are based off of a mock toe design um, made most famous in the 875 model Red Wings, which are a boot design about 60 years old, um, originally made for uh, hunting and outdoor activities. Um, and so a lot of the design elements in these classic boots um, are made with that in mind. And so uh, when I go bit by bit, I'll mention how they're connected with hunting in the outdoors. Um, these boots are made with basically the same manufacturing standards, um, the same leathers, uh, the same construction techniques as uh, the original Red Wing um, boots that you could have gotten six, 60 years ago um, with some minor changes, um, but overall the manufacturing process is unchanged and that's what makes these boots very interesting. just uh, go through some of the different uh, elements of the construction of these boots. Um, these boots have what's called a oil slick leather which is a dark oil tan leather. Uh, the tanning process is basically uh, the art of converting um, animal proteins into a stable material. Um, so in other words making leather to last um, properly Tanning leather can ensure that it will have an extremely long lifetime as long as it's properly maintained. Um, these boots are oil tanned, um, which means that the tanning process is achieved through waxes and oils. And, uh, and what it yields is a boot that has a lot of richness in color and texture. Um, this is a relatively dark boot um, in uh, Red Wing's mock toe line. It's, um, darker in the video than it is in real life. I would really describe this as a pretty standard brown leather actually with a little bit of reddishness in it. Um, the oral legacy leather that's in the 875s is, is uh, just lighter and um, both of these are going to get darker with age but I, I would uh, probably um, just polish these with a brown leather um, although I've only owned these shoes for a couple weeks and I have not um, done any sort of maintenance on them yet. They don't need it at this point. The uh, leather here is made uh, at um, Red Wing, Minnesota as well, at the SB Foot Tanning Facility, which is a company that's owned by Red Wing and um, produces the leather for Red Wing. Um, so it's uh, sort of in-house, and uh, the quality of the leather is really outstanding. Um, I want to just do some close-ups. Um, I loosened up the laces on this. Um, if you look inside, you can tell that you've got a, a genuine full leather insole. Um, and, uh, and you can just see how beautifully consistent the grain is on the uh, inside of the, the leather, the, the rough side of the leather. Um, it's just a very nice golden brown. Um, all the stitching on this is impeccable. Red Wing makes a point of bragging about the uh, triple stitching here. Um, and uh, it's very consistent throughout the whole boot. Um, it's uh, The only labeling you have is the tag here and then a little bit of branding on the side. Um, just uh, stamped in the leather there, but it's really not very conspicuous. The welt is a Goodyear welt. And that is basically a process of uh, traditionally making shoes where uh, you hand sew the different parts of the shoe together. I go into the, the Goodyear Welt process in my uh, video on the Brogue Rangers, another Red Wing boot that I like, but I like these better actually because of the uh, oil finish, um, the oil tanned leather construction. Um, basically, uh, the upper part of the shoe is shaped over last and fastened on by sewing a leather um, or a, uh, I think this is a wood wood strip here, to the um, inner and upper sole. And so um, it's basically a way of ensuring that the shoe is held firmly together. 
um, and is also able to be taken apart and repaired indefinitely as long as all of the different parts of the shoe are properly maintained. Uh, so for example, you don't uh, wear the uh, outsole out to a point where it's affecting the, the welt and you maintain the leather so that um, through uh, basically keeping it conditioned you can, you can refasten it properly. The lacing on these boots is something that I think is often looked over. The, we often talk about the mock toe design when you're looking at Red Wings, but I think the lacing bears some commentary. Um, this is just an, uh, a very standard eyelet. Um, you've got um, what's called punched eyelets, and they're reinforced with metal grommets. So these are polished metal grommets. And some of the other Heritage Red Wings, you've got um, brass ones, and uh, they're a little bit fancier, but, but it's definitely a solid... Um, solid construction. It seems like each one of these are very secure. You're not going to have problems with them pulling out or anything. Um, the laces are actually made by Red Wing as well in the USA. And uh, Red Wing has a unique deal where they'll, they'll replace your first pair of laces for free, uh, which I think is a great quality um, commitment. Um, you've also, you also notice that these laces, even though I've only owned these shoes for a couple weeks, um, they, they already exhibit some some signs of, of where I'm tying the shoes. Um, I really only need to do a single knot with these boots, which is really convenient, um, and uh, and they they stay tied. So these laces are definitely designed. They're lightly waxed to um, to stay um, to stay the way that you tie them, which I think is another um, quality item that's often an oversight in uh, especially in mass-produced boots. So um, as we move down the boot, we've got what's called a traction tread sole. And this is a, a, a sole that's all one piece. It's uh, made in one piece with this idea that um, if you're going to be hunting or you're going to be uh, in the outdoors, you're going to have uh, extra stability through um, this single uh, cushion crep outsole. It also makes the boots a lot lighter, um, which is something that a lot of people know. These are not light by any means compared to like a pair of running shoes, but but they are relatively light for a pair of um, traditionally constructed boots. Um, the soles are not like uh, foam. They're not really squishy, um, but they are um, they are um, definitely a lighter alternative to a rubber, uh, rubber sole, for example. Um, the the actual um, treads on on the uh, on the bottom of the outsole are um, not very thick, um, and uh, they do already already showing signs of wear just wearing them for a couple weeks, um, but uh, but they're textured in a way that, that they're supposed to be very anti-slip, which um, being in Iowa, that's a concern for me during the winter. I hope that that they are actually anti-slick. I haven't had a situation where I've been walking on ice or anything yet. Um, so basically, you've got uh, a boot t traditionally constructed, uh, designed that's six years six years old, that's held the test of time, uh, backed by a company that that intends and uh, wants its um, uh, consumers to continue to uh, maintain and and um, keep up these boots. They have uh, an amazing, uh, beautiful. Um, uh, basically a remanufacturing process where if you wear out your soles enough that you need to get them reconstructed or if you want the leather refinished you can bring them back to Red Wing um, for a pretty reasonable price um, get them uh, totally rebuilt restored um, and you know that this is one thing that um, in the world of shoes is a relatively rare um, level of service that you find you know um, a lot of smaller um, boot manufacturers um, are still offering that service if they're made in the USA. Um, we've got um, Alden, for example, or even a, a newer small company like Oak Street, Oak Street Bootmakers, which does an amazing job with their boots. Um, but a lot of a lot of larger companies just don't even provide this level of, uh, of commitment to their products anymore. And uh, it's kind of a different philosophy, really, in my opinion, about the um, goods that we own. Are we um, interested in a level of conservation? and uh, a level of uh, commitment to our material products in a way that that um, we're going to actually have some sort of relationship with them, we kind of live in a, uh, a culture where uh, autonomy from our, our goods is uh, 
results in a, a consumeristic disposable attitude but these things are not disposable or they shouldn't be treated that way they're they're better than that and uh, I think that that's something really excellent um, especially the way that footwear is so disposable these days um, so anyway we've got uh, these uh, 8138 boots from Red Wing uh, mock toe design um, very comfortable to wear you know they're uh, fairly wide these are D's um, I'm, I'm a 12 normally and I got them a half size down like people recommend with Red Wing boots and that was a good decision um, they, they haven't required any sort of break-in for me because um, they just fit my feet. Um, and so I recommend figuring out your, your shoe size if you're going to buy a pair of Red Wings because um, some of Red Wings shoes do have a stiffer leather and will require a break-in period, which will be exacerbated if you buy, buy shoes that are too small. Um, but uh, basically, um, I'm very happy with these boots, and I hope that they give me years of service. Um, uh, I ended up going with this somewhat informal... Um, mock toe design um, rather than a pair of Iron Rangers um, for this reason actually that my dad um, had a pair of mock toe Red Wings just like this um, when I was a kid um, and uh, that's kind of an amazing thing actually that that um, the boots that I saw him wear for I don't know probably 10 or 15 years as a kid um, uh, I am still able to find and hopefully maintain with the level of commitment that that my dad did um, so uh, Anyway, Red Wing uh, Mokto 6-inch boots made in the USA. Thanks for watching this video.